Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, who offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including photography, illustration, design, and filmmaking. So with all this newfound time in my hands, I've decided to take a step back and reflect on the personal work which I've been making for the last few years. It's called Lonely Cloud and is a series of photos I've made on my 8x10 that explore my relationship with the United Kingdom. It's deeply rooted in identity and patriotism and whether or not it's okay to be proud of where you're from. Last summer, I exhibited the work for the first time in Ireland. And if you'd like to hear a bit more about the photos themselves, I'm going to link in the description the talk we did at the exhibition. When I first set out to take these photos, I always wanted it to be my first proper photo book. And I think it still probably will be, it's just going to take a little while longer for that to happen. There's definitely still some photos which I want to take to make the series feel more complete. However, I did think it would be interesting at this point, whilst I can't take any more photos for the work, to create a little dummy book just to kind of reflect on how it's shaping up. Because a series of photos really does transform into something else when it becomes this physical object that you actually flick through and have a relationship with. And also, I partly just wanted to do this as entertainment. Since I can't make any new photos for it right now, I might as well do something with them. So the first thing which I decided to do was to go through all of the images and just touch them up a little bit on Photoshop. I don't know whether it's a mixture of my taste changing or just my eye or my skills, but I feel like I managed to make all the photos look just a little bit better than the last time that I edited them. So here are some of the tweaks I've been making to the photos, and I'm basically just trying to make them look as rich and as detailed as possible and make sure that the colours look accurate. So this is what this image looked like before, and this is how I've got it looking now. And it's I guess it's a subtle difference, but I think it's a lot better. And what I've done is just tweak the colours a little bit through a colour balance, change the exposure a bit through levels, and then added a bit more contrast through a curves. And then I've also done some dodging and burning. And I've done this on the cooling towers just to make them look a bit more ominous and kind of stand out and be a bit more punchy. And I've also darkened the trees on the left hand side just to make like a, a natural kind of vignette so that your eyes are drawn into the centre of the image. So again, that's what it did look like. And that's what it looks like now. And then there's another example, we've got this one, which I think at the time I had no idea this photo looked a bit washed out until I went back to it and edited it. All of the photos just lacked a bit of kind of oomph and punch. And I think I just didn't know how far I could push the files. So I think they're all quite small changes, but the overall impact just makes it seem a lot more polished. I also got rid of some of the images which I think hadn't aged as well. Some photos which I liked at the time that I'd taken them, but now I just don't think stood the test of time. And this left me with a much more tightly knit series of images of just 20 photos. So I stuck them all in Lightroom and exported them as 5 by 4 inch files. So I could send them off online to a print place and get some small prints made to work with the sequencing. So here are the prints. They're definitely not perfect, the colours and contrast aren't very accurate, but they did only cost £2 for 20 prints. I already know for the final design of the book that for the design I'm just looking to have one image per spread because I really want people to take the time to look at the photos one by one. This is actually something that's pretty common in photo books of large format photography. When you're going to spend so much time on making such a, a large negative of an image, you want the prints to have their kind of spotlight. And I think that the slow format of photography suits the slow format of a book. So for this, I'm not looking at facing images, which would be a relationship between one image sitting next to another. I've actually got maybe an easier job of picking one image after another. And this way, with a bit of separation of turning a page, I think you've got a bit more freedom. And I also know that I'm not really looking for any fancy design embellishes. I just want it to be simple and let the photos do the talking. So I think the hardest thing is picking the right opener. And maybe I'm not sure if I've even taken the perfect opening image yet, but I think for now maybe the photo of the house and the power plant is a good start. I want it to be a good establishing shot, not a portrait, something that sets the tone and location, and I think this is probably the best thing that I have for that. From this image, I'd look for something which leads on well. Whether it's through shape, content, or colour, there's a pretty large amount of green and grey in the image, so I think maybe this photo of the tree etching could be a good continuation. It's almost as if it's one of the cooling towers, the way that it's got a nice curvature kind of mimics it. And also this will establish the pretty heavy motif of flags pretty early on into the sequence. But I guess in a slightly more subtle way. I think at this point there's a decision to be made, whether it should go to establish that there's portraits in the work, or zoom back out to another landscape. I think either going to this image of another obscure flag of the burnt car 
or to this portrait of the couple could work really well. I think I'll actually go to the couple and then to the burnt car. There's a similarity in the background of the portrait to the tones in the car picture, and it just spreads out the flags a little bit. I don't want to bombard the viewer too early. So once I finished sequencing the prints, I opened up Adobe InDesign to make a digital version of the sequence. It's pretty simple to use for this. If you're not looking to do any fancy things, it's just dragging and dropping really. So I wanted to make a few different versions of this work in progress book. So for the first one, I used a real printers and I used a place called Mixam, which is a printer here in the UK, which is good for me. You should always try and print locally. And I got it made into this little wire spiral loop bound booklet. And this cost me £20 to make two copies, which I think is actually pretty affordable, especially considering it arrived in just a few days. One of the things that I think Mixam are really good at is that they don't hide their quoting system. It's all available on their website already, so you can just plug in the kind of numbers that you're thinking about, and it tells you there and then how much it's going to cost, and how much it would cost if you were to change anything. Most printers do all of this via email, and it's just really slow and hard to gauge whether you can afford it or not. However, the first batch have arrived and they're totally bound on the wrong edge. It now looks like a calendar and not a book. Thankfully, they are going to be fixing this, but due to the timeliness of the video, I'm just going to film with this one. I have to say also, the, the colour reproduction and the quality of the images definitely isn't the best. But for £20, I mean, you can't really complain. So I'm going to flick through this now and just give you a, a view of what I've made. However, there's going to be a part two to this fairly soon, where we actually hand make something and make something a bit nicer, make something a bit more high end uh, with a few different versions of handmade little booklets. And finally, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership to a vast variety of online classes across a bunch of different fields. Whether you're interested in learning more about photography or filmmaking, or you want to pick up something completely new, there's so much to explore. A class that I'd recommend is Daniel Scott's on InDesign Essentials, which would be perfect to do before jumping into making a zine. Another class I've done recently is Ryan Booth's DIY Cinematography. There's a bunch to learn here from practical skills about making video, to lighting and cinematography, so it's definitely a good one to check out. But what's amazing is this is just the tip of the iceberg, there's so much more to explore. So if you want to check out Skillshare, click the link in the description to get two months of free premium membership and explore your creativity. Thank you for watching. See you probably next week.